Good afternoon, everyone. If you guys like to connect with us on social media, please use the hashtag RCOE Esports. Um, welcome to this afternoon's Esports Symposium session. My name is Melinda and I will be your moderator tech for this session. I'm here to provide you virtual support for both you and your presenters. Uh, should you have any questions or need assistance with the Zoom interface, you can use the chat icon on the tool board uh, at the bottom of the screen, just search moderator Melinda and send me a direct private message and I will do my best to provide assistance to you. It is now my pleasure to introduce you to your presenter for the session streaming 101 with Noah Conway and Sebastian. I'm so sorry, Sebastian, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. No worries. Night now too, um, <laughs> I don't wanna butcher it. Uh, it's, all, it's all right, it's all right. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with everybody so you can all see what's going on. So we're gonna go ahead and first discuss just streaming 101. Um, the way we, we wanna start off is actually go ahead and start with a quick survey. So if you guys can do us a favor, um, you can go to menti.com and then use this code 407-4450. If somebody that, if one of our students can type that into the chat so you guys can see that, that would be awesome. Um, or you can just use this QR code. Um, if the faces are blocking it, just move, you can move us around so you can get out, get us out of the way. You can use their cell phone and just fill that out for us. Um, and basically what is gonna happen is as you guys fill this out, We'll be collecting responses here so we can actually see what's going on, see what words you guys think of whenever you think of streaming. So go ahead, fill that out for us so we can get an idea. We'll talk about it a little bit and then we'll introduce ourselves um, and go from there. All right, video, perfect, awesome. And if you've never used Mentimeter before, or you've never heard of it, it basically is gonna create a word cloud. The most used word will be the largest. The different ones are the, sm are the smaller ones will be the ones that were mentioned, but not as frequently. All right, so some words we see worldwide, tech, video, followers, entertainment, YouTube, and games. Um, those are all very, very relevant to streaming. Um, and one that we don't see up here is Twitch, which is the main video game streaming platform. A lot of people know about YouTube, um, but we're gonna talk about both. We'll talk about YouTube very briefly, but for the main part, Whenever we talk about streaming, we're talking about Twitch. So I'm going to go ahead and move on from here. And I'll share, we'll go ahead, introduce our students. Um, I feel like these are the people who you want to hear from the most. Um, we got Joseph uh, Jara. He is our president, and he is also our Valorant captain. Joseph, if you want to introduce yourself, tell us a little about eSports. Uh, hello. Yes, uh, my name is Joseph Jara. Well, we started this club. Aaron and I and Gilbert uh, a year ago through our profound interest and passion for gaming and to spread that with other gamers that also go to our school. And, and yeah, it's gone pretty good from there. We, there's, we actually picked up a bit during quarantine and we're seeing excellent progress, especially with Twitch. Awesome. All right. And then we have Aaron Intall, that is our club vice president. Aaron, if you just want to introduce yourself real quick. Um, hi, I uh, helped a lot with Joey. Um, he actually had to convince me to start the club. Um, I, I wasn't exactly sure if we would survive because it was gaming and uh, we weren't really sure if like the other people around campus would like accept that. They would think that, oh, they just want to skip out on class and play video games. But um, we wanted to find a way to like, connect the two 
And I'm really glad that it turned out the way it was because it's been really helpful for me um, as a person. And I've learned so much from the club. Awesome. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So those are actually our founders. They found us as a, as freshmen, they are still sophomores now. So um, they have a very bright future. They're hoping to see esports take off in the next two years before they graduate. Um, and we couldn't be where we're at today without their help. So um, thank you guys as well. We're going to get into our other three presenters. These are students that I actually have in my classroom, and it's awesome to see them outside of the classroom. These are our seniors. Uh, we'll start with Maxine. Maxine, if you want to just introduce yourself real quick. Hi, guys. So I'm Maxine Newton, and for eSports, this is my first year. I am the event organizer, so some of the events that we have been doing are Teacher Among Us game nights, and like it's really fun to see the students and the teachers interacting with like outside of school and like teaching the teachers how to play Among Us because they don't really play video games. So like, that's fun too. I am also the social media um, manager. So like Twitter, Instagram, that's mainly me. If you see any grammar mistakes, that was not me. That was Conaway, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, and I'm also on one of the teams that our esports have at our club and that's League of Legends. Like just saying, I don't know, it's really fun being like more involved into school because of quarantine and everything. I thought, oh, well, my senior year is like away. Like I don't have anything to do. But esports has like kept me grounded. I have met so many new people like in this club. And it's crazy because I probably would have never talked to them in school because we're just from different backgrounds. And I don't know, it just brought us all together. But thank you for joining us. Oh, no, that was not the word. Thank you for joining us today. Thank Perfect. Thank you, Maxine. All right, we'll talk to Sebastian. He is also the co-presenter that I put on here. He was just the student that was in my Google Meet call whenever I was filling this out. He always hangs out on Fridays. Go ahead, Sebastian. Hi, everyone. My name is Sebastian Niemtu, and for the eSports Club, I am sort of their, their lead streamer on Twitch. And it is, uh, I'd say, technically my, my second year. Uh, the first year, I wasn't really um, interactive enough because the club was just starting out. And after, when this year started, I decided to join it back up again and see what's different. And it is immensely different than what it was a year ago. And like Joey Joseph said, um, this quarantine has exploded the esports club in content uh, and sort of everything and i'm i'm their lead streamer I, I i guess i stream the most out of everyone and um i i stream a lot on um like personal so i'm i guess i'm a little more experienced than everyone in the entire club with streaming and yeah <laughs> perfect all right. And then our lead graphic designer, Kevin, I actually had him in my physics class last year. Never knew that he was into esports or anything like that. Never imagined him. We put him in front of Overwatch and he turns into a different animal. So Kevin, if you want to introduce <laughs> yourself, go ahead. Uh, I'm Kevin Zozobrado. I'm the lead graphic designer for this club. And honestly, I just joined this club solely for the sole reason that Mr. Conaway was the advisor and that was it. But then I, I heard like we're streaming and there isn't really many graphics on the screen. It's just kind of like the game and that's it. So I thought I'd just take the charge on making everything for the uh, this club look all flashy and cool. <laughs> yes, and he does an amazing job. Uh, you'll actually see a lot of his work that we have in the presentation. And also we use a lot of it on stream as well. Um, just a little bit of background on our club. We started out last year, so we're still fairly new. Um, we're starting to work towards um, being able to, once we return back to campus, actually having a computer lab on campus. Um, and we've also just started streaming on Twitch this year. Uh, it started maybe about two months ago. Uh, and we've gotten so much support from our district office, uh, Mark Sinat up there, 
has been doing an amazing job with us and we've been doing a really good job uh, because of him and all the support we've got and we're hopefully going to take it to the next level and we're hopefully and we're excited to see where we go uh, last year we were mainly playing smash Aaron was actually on the winning team for smash for the smash tournament this year uh, for RCOE the crew battles um, so we're really proud of that so Keep it up, and we hope to keep exploring different uh, games, get better at them, and improve as we go on. So uh, this is also my second year as a teacher, um, and it's it's been a crazy ride, especially last year where my first year got cut off because of COVID. This year, it's all COVID. So, um, But esports has really been a way for me to give back. I actually graduated from Paloma Valley High School. In 2013, uh, I became an avid tutor there, and then I also subbed for a couple of times. Sebastian actually said that I subbed for him his freshman biology class, and now I'm one of his teachers in physics. So um, it's been a crazy ride, but esports is something that I'm passionate about, and the kids pick up on it. They share their passion. There's they share their passion, and uh we get things going and it's whenever we get things going it it's amazing and i can't wait to uh see where this club goes in the next couple of years so um i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna hand it off to the students we're gonna start with joseph jara our president He's just gonna introduce streaming um just as what it is and then we'll keep going from there so here we go okay so what is streaming streaming is broadcasting a game of your choice to an audience and being able to interact with that audience and through streaming there are multiple things to gain there's a increase in the sense of community there's mul multiple other benefits such as revenue publicity and many other things we'll talk about later in the presentation now when it comes to streaming there are two major platforms now the primary platform is twitch as you can see the numbers are far superior than the ones on youtube but YouTube also has a different way of expressing and getting and being expressing your content out to the internet. And that's through YouTube videos. So right. we'll show you how Twitch looks in just a second. This is how Twitch would normally look on a Twitch stream. So here we have Aaron playing one of his favorite games, Minecraft and you don't have to have your camera, which is something we'll discuss later, but you can see the level of interaction in the bottom left-hand corner as there's the chat that is talking to Aaron and pretty much having a good time and getting to sort of know your peers more. And the next will be an example of what we can do with YouTube to publicize our club more. Excuse the, the quality. I think that's the presentation uh, FPS. Trust me, this all looks very impressive if you see it, how it's supposed to be shown. Is the video quality laggy? Uh, yeah, just a bit. It's like frames that we're seeing. Okay. Um, mainly the idea here was just, it was a video basically showing just different highlights. That's another option you have with YouTube. You can use it more to take the highlights that you get from your stream and cut it down to where it's a shorter video instead of having to watch a two hour stream. Um, maybe instead of that, you could create a 10 minute video that highlights the important stuff. So um, that's what's going on with YouTube. And go ahead, Joey. Okay, now this is um, this is a circle by NASF. And this kind of shows how we're gonna be talking to how streaming and Twitch fits into all of this. 
So streaming, that's under content creation, but it also goes far beyond that because depending on the type of stream that you're doing, can it goes into all these points. So for example, if you're streaming a game or a tournament, a scrim, practice, that could also fall under strategics because you might be able to go back to that stream and analyze mistakes, errors, and improve upon that. And then using that VOD, you can have coaches look at that and create theory, do multiple things with it to further and improve the esport teams. Now, within streaming, there are there's a lot of planning that goes into it. Sometimes you have to advertise when you're streaming, where you're streaming, the, the address to the stream on Twitch. And so that's where organizing comes into play. Now, this goes into general managing and event managing and also IT support because there will be some hitches that need to be fixed. But as long as you have somebody that knows what they're doing, which is also fairly easy to learn, then it'll be no problem at all. And also web developing, marketing, that's all part of the process that, co that connects with Twitch and sponsorship. Those are something that we're also going to be talking about similar to later on. And also business developing is a uh, crucial part that can come out of this. So we'll give you about five minutes to uh, explore Twitch and its full endeavors. So if you want to go ahead and explore Twitch, the way that you're gonna do that is you can go to twitch.tv. And if you click, if you type that into your web browser, you should be able to go and actually explore Twitch. Go check it out. Go find your favorite game that you have that's out there. Um, if you've already familiar with it, even awesome. Um, right now they're actually streaming. I believe they're doing like an eSport, uh, a video game thing. I'm sure my students know what it is. Do one of you guys know uh, what it is? I believe it is the Video Game Awards. Video Game Awards, yep. Um, so you go check that out. We'll give you about five minutes or so we'll come back at about 4 32 um and we'll pick up with the rest of the presentation we just kind of want to get you guys familiar with it if you've never looked at it before video game awards um they're also supposed to be releasing a new character for super smash brothers and i'm sure aaron's going to go check that out right now uh just to check they've actually already announced it all right you want to tell us who it is um, I would, but that was, uh, it's irrelevant to the presentation, so. Hey, I'm sure there's a lot of people here that want to, that want to know, Aaron. Go ahead. Um, it is Sephiroth from Final Fantasy. Interesting. Awesome. Just to make sure we finish up the presentation and we also have time for questions, we're actually just gonna go ahead um, and pick up the presentation again in another minute or so, uh, just to make sure that we have enough time to we get through it because I don't wanna run too late. I know some of our students here have uh, actual match, uh, not Matt, well, some of them have to stream tonight um, and then others actually have calc oral quizzes that they have to do that they're a little stressed out about. So they're gonna to wanna to have to do that eventually. Um, but, uh, so we'll get started here in another minute or so. Favorite streamer moments. Do you guys have any of your favorite streaming moments? I know Sebastian can probably answer this the best because he's been streaming the most, but also Maxine has been streaming League of Legends. so. Uh, what do you guys think? 
any of your favorite streamer moments that you've had so far? So I'm going to go first. Um, it, so Tyler and Carter that we, I stream with them since they're on the league team, they decided that they wanted to do this um, force and rush against me because I was playing Darius. Um, Darius is a heavy champion and they were playing two support champions. So and I wasn't paying attention because I was reading chat because we just got a new sub and I was like really excited. So they rushed in and they killed me and I lost all my items and they thought it was the most funniest thing. And it's in one of the VODs, but I don't know. I just really love the league team. They're just really fun to hang around with. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, one of my favorite uh, streaming moments was when we were streaming, uh, where I was streaming Among Us about two weeks ago, or maybe three. I forget. It was a, it was a while ago. And Mr. Conway over here uh, was playing with us. <laughs> and Maxine on the game Among Us uh, was the imposter and she killed Conway and I had Aaron and another one of my friends Caleb at my house at that time when we saw Conway's ghost <laughs> everyone started laughing and Aaron who was on my bed and Caleb who was on my bed they started getting up in front of the camera and dancing <laughs> and it was it was honestly a really a really fun I guess five ten minutes of of what happened and I kind of want something like that to happen again <laughs> all right so let's go ahead come back to the presentation uh we're actually going to have our next student and i believe this is maxine stern on safety so that is something that came up quite a bit as far as uh something we wanted to make sure we focused on uh, whenever we were starting up with streaming um, so Maxine's going to talk about just three features of safety concerns to make sure that streaming is safe for our students. Okay, guys. So during streaming, basically, um, stream delays. Stream delays are a thing where you get to delay the stream to, like, the average time is 5 to 25 seconds of delay. And you're like, why would you want to do that? When do you want to see it live? I mean, yes, that is to it's like still live, but it's like a little bit not live. And we do that to keep like the um, integrity of the game because you could be in a match and like you don't want the other team to be team sniping, like not team sniping, stream sniping. That's basically where they hop on the stream too and they can see what you're doing to see like your play by play. So that's why we have stream delays and they're very helpful in like games like Among Us and stuff. But yeah. Okay, bots and mods. So basically, so basically in Twitch, um, there's bots and bots basically help the mods if they don't see see something that's happening in chat. So say if people are spamming stuff or like saying bad words, we don't want to see that. So like the bots will take care of them, ban them, like time them out, you know, mods. So basically when the streamer is streaming, mods are basically like the background streamer, if that makes sense. They handle all the background stuff to get everything working, to see chat, to hype up chat, you know what I mean? Just to keep it live and active. And it's just, um, the thing with mods, they kind of act like a bot too. Um, so if the mod's not there, the bot will act like that. But the mod's basically like, okay, I can ban people too. If there's so much that's happening, I can do the same thing. Mods are really fun because they're just like, I don't know, they're just like your little buddies. You know what I mean? All the streamers that are in esports, they're a mod too. And yeah, so next slide. Okay, ban users. So basically, um, our first Among Us stream, we didn't really have everything down, like, you know what I mean? We were just like, okay, let's stream one day, you know what I mean? And we had to ban a lot of people because we didn't have the bots or mods. Um, how many active mods? Oh, yeah, so in one setting, you have up to nine active mods. And that's a lot for us because we have around 500 followers. So like having nine mods in a chat, it's like really, really good. Um, but to ban users, so say if they're saying something bad, you could just instant ban them. If you don't want to see something, you could ban them because like you also have to think about your guidelines that you have set for your channel and the Twitch guidelines too. That we're gonna like you're gonna see more about it later. But yeah, so that's banning users. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Maxine. Um, I think you already asked answered this question, but how many active moderators can you have? I believe the answer would be nine, correct? Awesome. Yes, that is correct. All right. 
Sebastian, you want to talk about the Twitch guidelines because we did have a question about middle schoolers. There are some rules about that with being a 13 year old limit and stuff like that. What other guidelines does Twitch provide for us? So for Twitch guidelines, um, along with being a 13 year old age limit to streaming, um, the uh, they're called community twitch community guidelines and um, everyone who uses the platform twitch has to follow them streamers and viewers included um community guidelines are just a set of rules that the streaming community has to follow and that mostly includes local and last national laws in your country or state um you know the basic basic stuff um one other sort of community guideline is not using any alternative accounts to um, void a ban or suspension from a certain stream and no violence of any sort, um, self-inflicting abuse or even any alcoholic consumption as that is uh, illegal to show online, especially with how you have kids watching streams and adults watching streams so they have a level playing field for everyone so keep it safe keep it pg sort of and also under the twitch community guidelines there's no there's no nudity of any kind permitted on the site so you won't find any of that in there it's if, it'll if there is a situation where that does appear that user will be banned and completely gone from the website and twitch community guidelines are just a set of rules that are supposed to be uh, <laughs> twitch community guidelines are a set of rules that are to be expected to be met by all streamers and viewers on the platform in order to provide a safe and fun environment to watch and enjoy. Awesome. All right, keep going. Uh, so on Twitch, you can, well, when you're live streaming, you're interacting with your viewers. That is the main, the main goal when you want to Twitch stream is to interact with your viewers and want to keep them on your stream. So both you as the streamer and the viewer will have a fun and entertaining time. One way to keep the viewer on your stream is to have your camera connected to whatever you're using to stream and to turn it on. Now it's, it's not required, but it's, it's a sort of optional thing. And it, it honestly makes the stream a lot more, uh, it, it makes the viewer feel like they're actually talking to a person. And with the school esports club streaming, uh, we can have our cameras on, but you have you had to have signed a specific contract saying that you are okay with being shared online from the school with pictures or videos and such. So that that is what twitch streamers can do they can use their camera and be able to interact more with their viewers to have a better time and lastly with this little section uh twitch actually encourages people to not use their real name mostly because they want to prevent any sort of harassment or um spam of any type of any type and not, uh, not inputting your real name will help just sort of keep everything on the down low and keep everything calm and not cause any stir up within the viewers and or any, anything sent to whatever platform that you use. And it's, it's just a massive safety concern and Usually people who stream, they don't normally put their real name. They have some sort of username that they make up to be unique and to have a sort of personality online as well. Awesome. All right. So we're going to go ahead and go to Aaron real quick. He's going to talk about the benefits to Twitch. There are so many to count, but we're going to go ahead and just talk about 
the main four that we saw in the past couple months from streaming. Um, go, go ahead, Aaron. Um, uh, caring for cleaning green scenes. Does anyone know about that? Because uh, I don't have a main stream, so. Um, anyways, um, we've actually generated a lot of revenue uh, over the past couple months that we've been able to stream. Um, it hasn't exactly been easy. As you can see, we've made uh, a whole $28 um, just from mostly gift subs, um, and which are basically, it's like a donation, but with perks. Um, and you'll see that we, uh, one of our Among Us streams was the time where we got like our first, uh, bits, which are basically another form of donation. And we got an actual, um, donation, which was, I believe it was a dollar or $10. I can't really remember. Um, and it's... It's been really fun to see uh, how we've grown. And especially from where we came from uh, when we first started out, we didn't exactly know if we were going to be able to actually like make money from this. Uh, and this money, it's going to be going to our computer lab that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation. Uh, Initially, we thought that we would just be streaming and it would just be a fun thing and we would just have it as something to take a load off at the end of the day. Uh, and eventually it turned into something that we really started to care about. And eventually we started to realize that this is something that we really wanted to do. And uh, you'll see later that we've actually come up with an entire schedule. We have uh, me, uh, Sebastian and Maxine are all streamers. And it's something that we've began to really take a look at. And it's, it's kind of like, uh, like how teachers at the end of the school year look at their class and like, they're like, oh yeah, I, I, te I taught these kids. And, and I hope that one day they can use, uh, use this. And I, I look at the Twitch channel personally, and I, I feel like I, I hope that when I graduate, there will be you know, new streamers, like maybe freshmen, maybe, uh, maybe the class before me, but I just hope that eventually it can keep on going and keep on growing because the generating revenue, uh, while it can be really fun to know that, wow, we made money off of this. It's also, uh, how do you say it's also given me, or personally, it's given me something to look forward to because one day I hope that uh, the computer lab that we were talking about will get built. And I hope that we can somehow fund most of it. And the only way we can do that is really through uh, revenue. And we can actually show the first time we get bits and the first time we get donations or a donation, actually. Yes, and this is honestly probably one of the highlights. Uh, I know we were talking about the highlights of streaming so far. Um, just watching these videos, every time I watch these videos, bring me so much happiness. And even though it's only a dollar, just seeing the excitement that the students get in streaming, it, it makes it really worthwhile. And that's actually something tomorrow we're going to be streaming for a Teacher Among Us game. And I'm hoping we'll see a lot of this because last stream we did this, we had over 200 viewers. So we're hoping to get more, um, but just take a look for yourself. It's probably one of my favorite. These two are probably one of my favorite videos as to what we've been doing so far. And this is why uh, Twitch is so rewarding, just seeing this, this these clips. So, Can I make a quick comment, Noah? Yeah. So, um, uh, so what you guys are doing is in – as far as clubs go, it's a very new uh, territory because uh, usually when you're raising money for clubs, it's like selling things to people and candy and all these different things. And you guys are doing something completely different where you're actually making money off of people watching you play. 
-hmm. And so I want to congratulate you guys on that because that is like a pioneering move right there. It, it, that's like the first in our district where a club is making money off of <clears throat> just people interested in their club. So anyways, I think that's awesome. And students, I haven't met you, but um, I'm Mark Sinnott and I help out Noah whenever I can. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so we're hoping to keep continuing this. This is just what we. This is just our first bits donation, uh, and Sebastian's reaction to this just sums up my reaction in general as well. Also, Conway, I'm going to interview real fast. Do you have the volume all the way up on YouTube? No, can you want me to turn it up louder? Yes, we cannot hear anything. Okay, got it. I might have to take my headset off because that's gonna hurt my ears. Um, okay, what happened? All right, so that's the donation one. I think it's not, um, no, I think it's <laughs> sharing the sound from your computer. Oh, okay, that might be the problem. Okay, um, the main thing that I just wanted to show here is just the reactions that we get. Um, and then you get the excitement from it as well. Um, so you can check out these videos if you guys want to. We'll share the PowerPoint afterwards. Um, so you can check this out as well. Um, but we'll continue, uh, pick up. Aaron, if you want to continue. Mm. Um, another thing that streaming has brought for us is that we've really got the club out there. Uh, I believe that someone actually joined not too long ago because they heard about the club from the Twitch channel. Um, and I, I feel like it's uh, really like signal boosted our cause. And it's been really interesting, especially since uh, last year, we weren't able to stream, and suddenly we have uh, all these all these new members, and they uh, they get to see us do all this cool stuff that before we only knew, or like only the people who actually attended the like the games or the tournaments or whatever uh, would see. Awesome. Um, and lastly, having a sense of community, I believe, is really important, especially now, um, where wherever where everyone's locked inside, everyone's looking for something to do, and it it helps both. Well, at, at least personally, it, it helps me, and I would like to think that uh, like talking to people, people uh, who are trying to like chat on the stream. Uh, it helps like take a load off, especially after a long day. Maybe we've uh, had a bunch of tests that day or like now finals week is coming up and, and I'm really valuing my, my stream time because I feel like it's one of the few times where I'm allowed to just like chill out and I don't really have to think about uh, what's going on the next day for just a couple hours until I end the stream. And awesome. I, I hope that like it's the same way for the people watching as well. Yeah, and for the teacher side of it too, um, whenever we do these Teacher Among Us games, it really brings us together. Uh, we did a survey where we asked all students, what did they think of the Among Us game? Everybody gave us uh, praise for it. They were all saying how they felt connected to their teachers, even though they've never actually met them. It was nice to see the teachers playing um, games that the students play. And it also led to teachers feeling more connected with their students and so on. So that's another reason we're excited for tomorrow to see how that goes and hopefully continue to build on that sense of community we have at Paloma Valley. So, all right. And then the last slide, Aaron, if you just want to talk about the stream reports that we get on Twitch. Uh, yes. Um, at the end of every stream, uh, or I believe, it might be every stream day, not entirely sure. It's been a little bit finicky, 
but uh, we get to see how well we've done. Um, I believe this is the uh, report for the uh, Teachers Among Us game. And we get to know pretty much uh, where people started watching. Uh, and I believe like we get to know what parts were best because at certain points, the viewers start to spike. And that's where like a lot of interesting things happen. And we also get just get to know like, oh, how many more viewers have seen our stream or, or is our maximum viewer count? And it really like helps us to know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong uh, so we can make our best stream. So we can make sure that no one's really losing, losing interest. And so that uh, for the next time that we like do something really big, we have something to like compare it to. Awesome. And this is also something that's been driving Maxine and Kevin. They've been arguing about which one's better, League of Legends or Overwatch. Um, it gets pretty heated at times, and they started comparing the stream reports today. But um, it's definitely been something cool, and just being able to have this to reflect on it, and it automatically generates it, it's really nice. Um, we're hoping to break this mark where we had 807 people tune in during our live stream on the uh, Twitch channel that we made uh, or on our stream for the Teacher Among Us back in October. We've come so far since October um, and Kevin's going to show you just all of the amazing things that he made. Uh, so Kevin, if you're ready to flex, here you go. Um, so let's get into the nitty gritty of things. How do you stream? You're, you're going to be using a program called OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast Software. There are multiple versions of OBS, but I do recommend that you use Streamlabs OBS due to its um, beginner streamer friendliness and just easy accessibility, which I'll get more into in a second. Streaming is really just as simple as getting the code from Twitch, putting it into OBS itself, and then hitting live. And that's about it. You're streaming. But I, I really do suggest that you that there's more work put into it and you make the stream look nice. For example, on the screen right now is a stream starting soon screen that I made for um, the stream. And with all, with all the scenes, I do recommend that you have streams, a stream starting screen, a be right back screen, and a, an ending screen, which all should be pretty self-explanatory. Starting screen for when you, right when you hit live, be right back for bathroom breaks or doing something in game that you don't want to, um, the audience to see and an ending screen, you know, when you're about to go offline. This is where you could be getting the graphic designers of the school to help in and pitch in their ideas, which is what I did. However, remember when I said that Streamlabs OBS is very beginner streamer friendly. You don't even need a graphic designer. There are multiple free presets that you can use that are just there for you. It, it'll give you the stream starting screen, be right back, ending screen, and even transitions. If uh, if you do take the more uh, creative route, taking the uh, getting a graphic designer, it's always fun to also design towards a towards holidays too. So for example, I made a Christmas stream starting screen too, which should be showing up on screen too. It's our it's our logo with a Santa hat on and Christmas lights all cozy and, you know, just Christmas theme and stuff, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I, I'm going to leave that slide with one note. The sole purpose of this is to entertain, obviously. So although this is all optional, it's always nice to have little bits of eye candy for the audience to look at alongside the game because it'll just it go it goes a long way uh next slide creating a stream schedule is very helpful and you can do this straight inside of twitch to tell your audience where exactly when exactly you're going to be streaming and it also put you on track for just 
it'll put you on track for you know when you should be streaming because you don't want to just be sporadically hitting the live button you get one viewer because they're like oh i didn't know you were going to stream today uh, next slide <laughs> oh god <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, you can make emotes in twitch and what emotes are are things uh, i feel like you guys know what emotes are but what emotes are is just things that the audience can put in the chat, specifically the people who subbed and are actively supporting the channel. When you can you can do anything with emotes, I just I recommend that you do something like fun, something that there's a reason that they're supporting, so they get these super nice emotes like we have here, like a. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Sebastian was the one that actually created the one on the right. Um, he decided to one day stay up and play with Photoshop. And four hours later, he messaged me at like midnight saying, hey, can you check this out? And I was like, OK, I guess. And that's what I saw. So, um, yeah, uh, is, I'm, I'm cool with it as long as they keep it normal. Um, I mean, school appropriate, that is, but. Um, this is all mainly from just one picture too, and I'm okay with it. They're enjoying it, um, and so on. So um, that's going to be it, I believe. Uh, if you have any questions, we'll open it up for questions. If you also want to contact me directly, my email is up there for you. You can all also follow us on any of our social medias. You can check out our Twitch channel. If it's a hyperlink, um, my students actually are going to be streaming. Uh, in the next hour or so, I believe we're playing Pixelmon on Minecraft. Uh, I might have to check that out. I'm a big video, I'm a big uh, Pokemon player myself. Um, and then you can also on your Twitch channel, you can put the suggested streamers of those that have their um, their own personal stream there as well. So this is Sebastian, Maxine is right here, Aaron is right here, um, and these are other streamers that we have everybody set up. But um, I want to do open it up to questions either to me or if you want to ask any of our students any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask and we'll do our best to answer them. Valorant, Joey, go ahead. Go ahead, Maxine. So, Mr. Josh, I just want to answer your question right now, um, starting the growth. So, basically, it was really hard at first to, like, getting people, like, to watch and, like, getting, like, to people, like, to know our name. So we started a Twitter account, Instagram, and by having those two, it has helped us so much because I make the flyers and the announcements, and we can send that to our ASB because our ASB has a following, and they will post that too. And it's like, I don't know, it just helps a lot by having that media because everybody's on media nowadays, and it just like helps getting that connection. So I hope that answered your question. And um, who wants to take on number three? Because I have no clue. Number three, so collabs. That's actually something that we're in the process of doing right now. We applied, we're going to attempt to do like sponsorships and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to reach out to businesses in the area, see if they would like to sponsor our club. Also, we'll reach out to different clubs throughout uh, Paloma Valley and see if they would like to collaborate with us on the Twitch stream um, and go from there. Uh, I believe the best way currently would probably be to email uh, but there are a couple of different companies, especially if we're wanting to collaborate with um, any types of brands or if we want to cooperate with other types of companies, then we go to them in person. So uh, hopefully that answers your question. We did see a question about Valorant, and that is Joseph's specialty. So Joey, if you want to hop on to Valorant. That Valorant Alrighty. question. So by what league do you play Valorant? I'm assuming you're mentioning ranks, in which case most of our players on our team, I'm a platinum level player, and we're us we're all around the high gold to uh, mid-plat level, I'd say, if that answers your question. Uh, okay. Joey. I think he also um, means um, like what league specifically oh, we're going to oh, be yeah. specifically NASEF was actually hosting Valorant tournaments that they played in. Um, they have scrimmages and stuff like that. And mm. yeah, so organization NACEF is definitely the one that we went to. 
uh, for that, they did extra credit ones. Um, and then for currently, uh, there's no extra credit ones going happening right now, but they do practice just in case there is a up and coming one as well. Okay. All right, and that is going to be it, it is five o'clock. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you all for showing up and for being our audience here. And we will hopefully Wait, Connelly, talk to you soon. Yeah. Um, can you go to our schedule again so you show the list of games we play? Yes. So this is our channel. We've played a couple different games on stream. We've done Jackbox. That's actually something I got on uh, Cyber Monday that we played. Our NACEF games we streamed for Rocket League and Overwatch. Um, and then we've done League of Legends, Valorant, and Minecraft. Um, as far as our schedule goes, this is our normal schedule. Um, Aaron is actually our random game Wednesdays. So he picks a random game and he'll play it on stream with other viewers and stuff like that. So. And we also play Among Us on Fridays with Sebastian. So, yep. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I, I, I just want to use my voice real quick. You guys were awesome. I really, I mean, I'm really impressed. I'm trying to start an esports program at Hemet High School. And I love it when I see student led um, things like this because it's really, you know, and it's neat. My 13 year old sitting right here and she just, I mean, and for her to say, this is awesome, you know, in a time like this, that's, it's pretty good. You guys, you guys did fantastic and keep doing what you're doing, you know. Thank so, you, Josh. Thank yeah, you. No problem. Have, hey, have Josh, how you been? Pretty good. How you doing, Mark? <laughs> good, man. <laughs> I'm still around, still doing my thing. <laughs> you can always email me, man. Just email me. I, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's right. good to see you guys. Yeah, good. Thank you, you guys. Yep. All right. Good job, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You guys are free to go back to the Discord if you would like. <laughs> we can debrief there. Good job, guys.